Hey boys and girls, it's Mrs. Walker. For our lesson today, we're going to talk about how we can find the area of shapes. So our learning goal for today says, I can identify the area of plain shapes. So the materials that you'll need for this lesson are your problem set, because good news, you're going to complete most of your problem set during this video today. So that'll save you some time for later. You're also going to need your pattern blocks that look like these. You're going to need a trapezoid, hexagon, triangle, and so on. So make sure that you have those to be able to complete today's lesson. Okay, let's jump in and get started. So I want you guys to have out problem one on your problem set. If I look at these two shapes here, I have shapes A and shape B. Does shape A or B take up more space? So which one do you think takes up more space, shape A or shape B? So I want you guys to pause the video, think about it, and then click play when you're ready to talk about it. Okay, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. So which one takes up more space? Hmm, what do you think? Some of you said A, maybe because it's longer. Some of you said B because it's maybe a little bit, um, there's more on the top and the bottom. Let's look. Okay, so we're going to use pattern blocks, triangle pattern blocks, to cover shape A and B. So go ahead and take out your pattern blocks, take out just the triangle, and you're going to cover those shapes and see how many take up each space, or how many triangles each shape takes up. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, do that, and write on your problem set how many go for each, how many triangles you need to cover each shape. Okay, so do that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. Um, oh wait, friends, hang on, I forgot one thing. So I wanna talk about this. So when we have our shapes here, notice how I have my shapes, they're kind of all over the place. Like right here in the middle, they're overlapping each other. See if I take that triangle and then I put this one right here, it covers the tip of it. And this one is hanging outside of my hexagon. So that's the wrong way to use your pattern blocks. So make sure that when you're using your pattern blocks, you're lining them up nice and neat and they're not overlapping and they're not sticking outside of the shape. Okay, so my non-example is the no on the right, and my yes example is um, on the left where the pattern blocks are not overlapping and they're not sticking outside of the shape. Okay, all right, so now you guys are going to uh, use your pattern blocks to be able to cover those shapes. And then click pause, do that, click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends. So what did you notice about the number of triangles it takes to cover up shapes A and B? Let's see. So when I did this, I came up with six triangles for shape A, and I used six triangles for shape B. So check that out, friends. They both take up the same space. Do all triangles you use to cover shapes A and B take up the same amount of space? So that means like if I took one from shape B, one triangle, and one from shape A, do those triangles each take up the same space? Yeah, they sure do, right? That's one triangle. What does that mean about the amount of space taken up by shapes A and B? Are they the same? Are they different? Yeah, they're the same because they both take up six triangles. The amount of flat space an area or a shape takes up is called its area. All right, so I want you guys to complete problems two and three on the problem set. So pause the video, complete problems two and three, and then click play when you're finished, and we're going to go on to the next problem. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, let's look at problem three. Okay, so we're talking about trapezoids to cover up shapes A and B. I think you guys did this one already, so let's look at it. So we have two trapezoids to cover up shape A, and then we have two trapezoids to cover up shape B. So what's the relationship between the size of the pattern blocks and the number of pattern blocks it requires to cover shapes A and B? So think about when we use the triangles, we needed six to cover these same shapes. But when we use the trapezoids, we only needed two to cover these shapes. So what does that tell you about that relationship between the size of the pattern block that you're using? Yeah, the larger the pattern block, the less you'll need to be able to cover that. You got it, awesome. All right, so now let's jump to problem five. 
So we're going to use square pattern blocks to cover the rectangle. So you guys are going to go ahead and take your square pattern block and use it to cover the rectangle. See how many that you'll need to cover that rectangle. Click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. So when I did this, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. Covers it nice and neatly. So how many squares do we need to cover our rectangle? Six, you got it. So the area of the rectangle is six square units. They're called square units because we're measuring in squares. All right, let's look at problem six. Use the trapezoid pattern blocks to cover the rectangle. Can you use trapezoids to measure the area of the rectangle? So go ahead and try that out. Click pause, then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. Okay, so when I tried this, I got my trapezoid right in there nice and neat. And then, oh, well, I can't put that one next to it. So, and if I try and cover up this, I have a space with a triangle right here in the middle. My, part of my trapezoid is hanging over. So that tells me that I can't use my trapezoid to measure the area of this rectangle because I'm going to have too many spaces like here that that's not going to fit a trapezoid. Here won't fit a trapezoid. So a trapezoid is not a good pattern block to use to measure uh, the area of this rectangle. See, it just doesn't work. Nope. Can't do it. All right, so let's talk about square units. Okay, so I'm going to say an area in square units, and you're going to make a rectangle with your pattern blocks having that area. Which pattern blocks will you use? Hint, hint, we're using square units. So, what pattern block do you think goes along with square units? Yeah, the square, you got it. Okay. So four square units, I'm just going to have you guys do this, but let's see one as an example. So I could draw my pattern block like this. I could have these four square units. I could draw it like this, or I could have it this way. They're using, each one has four square pattern blocks. Okay, so that translates to four square units. That's the area because it takes up four square units. Okay, so let's have you guys do one. So 12 square units. Go ahead and pause the video. Create a rectangle that has an area of 12 square units. Okay, make sure to click pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here we go. Okay, so here's the example that I came up with. I just did two rows of six. You could, do, could have done six rows of two to be able to show your area as well. So this is just one way to be able to model 12 square units. All right, so go ahead and model nine square units. Make sure you're making a rectangle that has nine square units. You can't have one piece that's kind of hanging off to the side. It's got to be a rectangle. Okay, so go ahead and pause, do that, and then click play when you're ready to go over it together. All right, friends, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here's what I came up with. I did three rows of three for my rectangle. All right, go ahead and do eight square units this time in your rectangle. So create a rectangle that has an area of eight square units. All right, make sure to pause if you need more time. Otherwise, here what I, here's what I came up with, two rows of four. Oh, somebody just said you came up with four rows of two. That's awesome too, good job. All right, so high five to you guys. Great job identifying the area of plane shapes. Please head back on over to the module to see what you need to complete for your independent practice. As always, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to help. And I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Bye, friends.